Good morning, chaps, chapesses. It's Tuesday, the 17th of October, and I've got to go out in a minute, so I'm going to do a quick experimental shave. Only this one as a sort of a, a homage to our great friend, a Gary, Gary Haywood, who did a magnificent test only yesterday, shaving with a deep hollow ground Yuri razor against an almost, well, actually, it was, no, tell a lie, against a wedge. And I didn't think that Yuri made wedges, but it was very near to being a, a wedge. Let's be kind and call it extreme quarter hollow. So this is extreme quarter hollow versus true hollow. And he did a, a marvelous job of it. I've got to say, total admiration. So I thought I would try and do a similar, similar but different razors. So I'm going to use the rigor razor, which I used the other day. And the rigor razor, oh, by the way, Yes, I'm using the same as Gary, but mine's in stick form. This is the tobacco, but the tobacco stick. You've seen it before. Anyway, Gary's uh, was a, a wonderful experiment and a wonderful test. So I thought I need to do a similar just to confirm his findings. So I'm using a rigor razor, which is very, very, very much a wedgy type blade. It's a... Uh, to be generous, again, you could call it quarter hollow, but it is very rigid, um, very modern steel as well. So on the same level, probably, as uh, Yuri Kravenko's uh, wonderful wedge. Anyway, I'm going to use that against an older deep hollow ground razor. And the reason for this being the older deep hollow ground is my favourite. And... Uh, if anybody's seen any of my previous videos, um, I have the highest regard for Philharmonica. And out of all the Philharmonicas, um, I think probably the one I'm going to use is the best. It's uh, very deep hollow, but it's a little bit special. They're a little bit, little bit more hard to find than your average uh, double temple. Anyway, enough of this. I shall show you the tools. Um, let's just wipe a bit off my lips. Hmm. Interesting. Right, here we are. Here we have probably my all-time favourite razor. This is the Philharmonica. And this is the a Special Parababas Duras. And this is, oh, I just can't tell you how gorgeous it is. They are hard to get. You won't find them growing on bushes. They haven't been made for many, many, many years. This is probably the finest uh, Spanish razor, German ground. Anyway, I've had 30, this is my 35th shave off this edge without touching it at all. I just strop it and that's it. So let's try. If you can hear how noisy it is. Now, although this is a deep hollow grind, it's actually not your normal deep hollow grind. It is very slightly more stiff than your normal Philharmonica double temples. It's uh, not amazingly different. Looking at it, it just looks to me to be pretty much the same. But supposedly they use special techniques one of the techniques they used, which I'm very impressed with, was a some form of plating. Now, I can't find the exact details. Doing a dapper shapes. Mostly because some lavas, from my limited experience, do tend to dry out. And uh, I think this is one of the ones that, that do. So although it's a very kind soap, and I, I admire it, the tobacco, but uh, I think it dries relatively rapidly. Anyway, let's go do another couple of strokes with this wonderful beast. Of all the razors, um, this is still my favorite. Although it's in a special category. This is uh, sort of collectible antique, like me. <laughs> anyway. Mm, bit of 
resistance here. Perhaps I should have soaked my stubble more. Yeah, there's a little bit of resistance. So maybe I need to strop this philomica more. Before I do, here's the Auriga razor. They're both eight eighths. They're both exactly the same depth of blade. But this, as you can probably see, I'm being a bit naff today. This is a semi wedge quarter hollow. Let's go over the same area. Can't hear a thing, can you? <laughs> That's the difference. Deep hollows are flexible, wedges ain't. Yeah, I think it's me at fault today. I'm rushing. I really didn't pay enough attention to preparation. If you really want a, a good shave, your prep is very important. And obviously I didn't prep enough. So what I'm gonna do is get a little bit more lava and then start on the other side and do exactly the same test as before. At the moment, they're equal. The rigidity is rather interesting. You, you'd think um, you'd have a little bit more control with a deep hollow. Not necessarily, in my opinion. Anyway, here we are. Let's try the rigger one more time. With the grain, both are magnificent. There's very little between them. The comment that I made on Gary's wonderful video is that the rigger, like any other quarter hollow, you tend to be a little bit more cautious with. There's no feedback, absolutely none. Other than what you can feel with vibrations. Yeah, on the first pass, they're both very, very, very good. The one thing I would say is originally this rigger, I believe, was on a 12K synthetic edge. And it wasn't as good as I'd like it. So the other day I put it through its paces. I put it on a 20K. And uh, the 20K edge wasn't much better, to be honest. So this morning, I hanging hair tested both as usual, and the rigor still wasn't as good, anywhere near as good as the Philomonica. So I put this on the pasted strop. Now I believe that the green pasted strops with the chromium dioxide green paste on puts you around the sort of 30k mark. Um, it did make a difference, but only when I did it twice. <laughs> First time it didn't do a lot, to be honest. And I gave it another 20 laps. I can even show you at some point. Here we are. Look, I'm greedy, I've got two. So there you are, there's your green chrome dioxide. And I have to say, a refreshing recalcitrant edge it does work yeah these um these riggers hold incredibly well you've got to give them their due they really do hold extremely well oh look malting <laughs> that's my cheap brush you see, this is the trouble. When you buy Irish weasel hair brushes, although they are supposedly as good as natural badger, they do molt a little bit. It's the amount of whiskey that they feed the poor creatures before they shear them. I think it has a deleterious effect on them. So don't use 
weasel hair brushes. Yeah, this is good. Do you know, that postage drop did make a heck of a difference. Even though I'd put a, a 20k Suhiro Gukomu edge on it, still weren't that good. You'll notice that now I'm doing strokes against the green to see how it performs. Yeah. Silent and deadly. I'm going to concentrate a little more on the rigor razor, but caused. This is the one that just had a new edge put on it. And uh, I'm slightly in doubt. No, it is good. I take it all back. So maybe a little more preparation when toying with a rigor razor. Definitely a little bit more sensitive to angle. I can honestly say, if you're likely to be uh, in a, a shambling, shambolic mood, I'd be very cautious with a rigid blade. It's just a matter of getting used to them, obviously. Yeah, you've got to be that. A tiny bit more cautious. I don't know if you want to lose your nose. I was going to be tempted today. I haven't got the time. I was going to be tempted to do the fool's pass. This is a brute. This you need to get used to. And I've only used it a few times, so it's a little bit of a, a newbie to me. I've had it for. Um, I don't know. I think I've had it for nearly two years since I really since I got into it. But it is that little bit more of a prized item that you need to get yourself used to. Whereas I'd say for anybody that's venturing, as I hope a few of you chaps are venturing into straight razor shaving, and you're a little uncertain of what to go for, I would go for a deep hollow. Um, I think most people find just that, that little bit easier. They sing to you as well, as this one will. Let's go another pass, but this time with my wonderful Philharmonica. Oh, you can hear it. Yeah, that's a Philly. You cannot mistake. Does a Philly cut well? Yeah. There's very, 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 very few things in life you can own which come up to the Rolls Royce Lamborghini standards. I can't afford a Lamborghini. I can afford the pleasure of using some of the world's very, very best razors. And this is one without any doubt at all. This is an absolute belter. I've already done that. <laughs> I can't find any stubble. Yeah, semi falls past. I can still hear it cutting. Yeah, there was a little bit left. I would say. I would still go for uh, the Philly. The only thing I would say is that when after your shave, you want to do a trim. Both are very good, but I have found rigid blades just maybe a little bit, a little bit more sore. But that's down to preparation. My prep today has been awful. This soap's drying out. Help. Definitely drying out. I'm not going to make this a long shave. This was just a, a semi-tester. The test, the real test is do it for several weeks. 
but this is this is still the king of the razors. But I'm not going to say it's the king of the custom razors because there are better. But custom razors are a different subject altogether. There you've got far more choice, even different steels. And this is a very old steel. Um, nobody quite knows its formulation. But of course, it's double quenched in ice water. And you couldn't tell the Philharmonica Company anything about good temper. Modern steel could be better, I don't know. I have my reservations about stainless. I'd say the RWL34, your modern stainless steel is very, very, very good. And uh, I'm sure some of the rather strange multi-folded stainless steels are good too. I have two of them. I'm a plain, simple person. This is really nice. No two ways about it. Let's go back to the rigger. Because the rigger, Mr. Firm, let's see if we can do a little bit of trimming. Totally different feel. That's what Gary said. There's there's no difference uh, as far as the quality of the cut goes. If you're wondering what the uh, huge bruise is, it's uh, me being an idiot. <laughs> Let's roll the blading. Not that it caused an accident, quite the opposite. It's actually getting the jacket on and off with a bloody great strap over my shoulder, carrying my boots. I went, oh, you get on, you bastard. And that's what it did. Anyway, that's what happens when you get old. You get thin skin. That is as far as I want to go. That's a really, really interesting test for me. I'd resurrected the edge on the rigor razor. The rigor razor had been on a 12. And then it wasn't really that good. I know its potential is marvellous. So I quickly put it to a 20k. Ukomyu, Suhiru, which is what Gary likes as well. And then it still wasn't as good as it should have been on the hanging hair test. Remember, I was comparing it to one of the world's great razors, a top end for the moniker. And uh, so a little bit of the chrome dioxide compound on a strop, and bang, you're back up to fill the moniker quality. Which one would I want to keep as a permanent razor? Do you know, I really don't know. For its looks and for its heritage and for its exquisite beauty, it's got to be Philharmonica. But for modern, incredible craftsmanship, and I've got to say the Riga Rigo Riga Razor is probably one of the best crafted I've ever seen. The polish on the blade of a Riga Razor is absolutely the very best. It's better. Sorry but it's actually better than a Max Sprecher. But the actual steel quality, I'm not absolutely certain of. I would say very high, but you've got to know what you're doing. Whereas with a Philharmonica, you haven't got to know what you're doing because Philharmonica will give you a perfect shave every time. So there you go. That's all I was going to do today. I want to meet a colleague on the M25 motorway and uh, to take some humble repairs to him. So I'll bid you all farewell. Please subscribe if you like this nonsense and I'll see you all soon. Bye for now.